Well, good morning, YouTube. This is Chuck. There's a raven flying by. This is uh, this is my view. Let me give you a quick pan here. I've moved. And where we come from, if you wonder where Crazy Town is, Crazy Town is right past that mountain pass, right down in there, about maybe three miles or so. And uh, let me sit back down here in the van so I can talk to you. Little Flapjack, is, he's just sitting over here, chilling. And uh, what we did is uh, Kevin had something come up and he decided he needed to get back home. So we cut our trip short from three nights to two nights. And uh, so everybody else uh, headed out this morning. Rob came up last night and spent one night with us. And uh, so they have all headed home this morning. And uh, I was already set up to stay out three nights. And uh, I decided to, I was going to stay there by myself. And I decided to move. And the reason why is because it's pretty darn cold up there at that elevation yet. Crazy Town's down at the bottom of a canyon. And it's got 7,000 foot mountains on both sides of it. And it doesn't warm up very much. It's, uh, it's a long time before the sun gets in there. And the sun sets real early. And, and uh it was down in the mid to low 30s and uh, so i decided i would come down here to a little bit lower elevation and uh, i'm going to do another video and i'll tell you more about this place and i'll do a van stuff video uh, because i changed from being squatch boy to being van boy and uh, but i figured i'd tell you what happened last night uh, last night wasn't near as spectacular as the night before but uh we did have some stuff that happened that's worth talking about and uh one of the things that happened was uh, we had uh, we had a bunch of little ones come in around us, and they were all cloaked, uh, but we could uh, we could see the the shimmering images or the uh, the distortions, if you will, and they they came right down and were standing kind of around us. And uh, we talked before about putting a chair out, and we had one that uh, we put two chairs out last night, spare chairs, and and we actually had one of them come sit in one of those spare chairs, and uh, three of the four guys could see it pretty well. I could see it real well, and. And uh, Kevin and uh, Chris could both see it real well. And uh, we had at one point, we weren't sure how many of them were around us. And when we had the little ones there, uh, uh, Chris was sitting across from me. And uh, he said there was a pretty large distortion standing right behind me. And uh, that was probably the adult that was supervising the little ones. And the, anyway, they, uh, they trust us enough. They let their little ones come in and be around us. And, and, uh, and we could see them. Uh, like I say, they were in distorted form, so we couldn't. They weren't in full solid form. But uh, at one point, I asked how many of them were there, and before I even could get the full question out, I immediately got back in mind speak thirteen. Well, interestingly enough, uh, as soon as I said that, of course, the other guys they tried putting their mind in neutral, see if they picked up a number, and both Kevin and Rob both picked up thirteen. So apparently, that was correct. There was thirteen of them there. And uh, so that I thought that was pretty cool. That was one thing that happened. Uh, the other thing that happened was uh, the uh, Kevin decided to go for a little walk down the down the entrance road that goes into where we camp at. And uh, so he headed off down there by himself in the dark. And it was pretty darn dark last night. And uh, we do that. But anyway, he got down there uh, a little ways. And actually, I'm going to reposition myself here. Anyway. Uh, he got down there a little ways, just not too far behind from where I parked my van. And he said he ran into uh, what he called a wall. And he said it wasn't a wall you couldn't go through, but it was it was like uh, you walk into to, uh, uh, something that was thicker and, and had a different vibe. And, and so he, uh, he was by himself. He decided not to go through it. And so he came back to camp and Chris and Rob headed off down there to see if they felt the same thing. And when they got to it, they they did. They felt the exact same thing. It's it's like a, it's like the air is thick, and uh, and you just it's like, so they decided to see what happened. They tried to plow through it, so they did, and they said it really wasn't very thick, and they kind of popped out the other side, and uh, as soon as they as soon as they did that, they took a half a dozen steps, and they realized you know hey maybe we should be on the other side of this, so they turned around and went back through it, and they said that on the way back through it, it didn't seem as oppressive or thick. But it said it felt like the air was very, very thick, and it like you kind of had to push your way through it. 
And we've had that happen before, and we're not quite sure what's going on there. Uh, we thought maybe that uh, it's a possibility that it's a it's a maybe a way to uh, like a wall that goes around the camp or something to try to keep us in one spot, or maybe it was there to protect the young ones from anything else that might be out there. I don't know what it might be, but we have we have run into that before. We actually ran into it there at Crazy Town to the point where one time Kevin went to walk through it. And he literally bounced off of it. He said it was so thick he couldn't walk through it. And it was like walking into a, a big rubber mat or something. But uh, but last night the guys, they were able to walk on through that and uh, and get out the other side. Uh, so we didn't have the spectacular stuff we happened to, had the other night. Uh, I went to bed. We all went to bed about 9.30. And uh, we kind of got the feeling that the show was over for the night. And... Uh, so I went to went to sleep and and I got woke up about about midnight thirty and had to go potty, and when I got up and went potty and I laid back down, uh, then I, all of a sudden I started getting little zaps, and uh, probably I don't know six or eight of them probably, and each one felt just a little bit different, and uh, and then after that then all of a sudden I started getting these little cold spells, and now I had my sleeping bag inside my bed and I was toasty warm. But I started getting these little cold spells, and I got six or eight of them as well in a row. And uh, they only lasted about 10 or 15 seconds. And uh, what I think was going on there, and I've had that happen there before at Crazy Town, is I think they had the little ones down there, and they were practicing, and we were their crash test dummies, if you will. And they were testing out how to do that, and they were using me as a training aid. And and I've had that happen before, uh, something similar, not the exact same thing, but... uh, but anyway, I thought it was kind of interesting, and after that, you know, that whole episode took maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, and uh, and once that was over with, I went right back to sleep, and I slept until almost 5. Just toasty warm, not cold at all. Well, this morning, of course, like I say, everybody packed up and left, and I decided that to, uh, it was just cold up there. I wanted to come down to a little lower elevation, so I came down here to where I'm at, and I'm going to stay here the rest of the day and stay here tonight, watch the sunset, and... This is a whole different uh, different kind of territory from up there where Crazy Town's at. Crazy Town's in a canyon in the forest. And this down here, we're on top of a cliff in the desert. And so I'm kind of looking forward to being able to sit out tonight and watch the stars. Because up at Crazy Town, all you do is see the stars in between the trees. But here I've got a I've got a sky horizon to horizon. And uh, like I say, I'm going to do a video about that under advanced stuff. I'll do it as a different video. So for this one, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to uh, tell you, as I always do, take care of each other and love each other. And I went from being Squatch Boy to Van Boy. And Flapjack over here, he's uh, he's done real well at uh, being Van Dog. And uh, he uh, he was over mooching food from all the guys. And of course, they weren't. You know, I kept telling him not to do it, and they kept giving him anyway. He got uh, he definitely got his share of Pringles. I'll tell you that. But uh, anyway. Uh, Give you spin you around one more time to give you a look at this beautiful beautiful view that down there folks is uh, Roosevelt Lake in Gila County Arizona and uh, it's a uh, it's the largest lake that's totally located within the state of Arizona there's bigger ones of course Lake Mead and Lake Powell are both way bigger but both those share a state boundary with another state so this is uh, this is the Salt River arm you're looking at over here and Back around behind that, this point over here is the what they call the Town of Creek Arm. But you can see the the cliffs here. The area back over that direction is over toward Globe. And the area I showed you before, back up here, that's back up there where Crazy Town's at. And let me give you one more look over here at the mountains. Those are the mighty Sierra Anchas. Very, very tough country. So until I talk to you again, I'll just tell you peace out.